This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power and Bill Component. Yo, what's up? Behind me here you see the Kia EV3. This is the 81 kilowatt hour, the long range. And today I want to try something fun. You know, it has a vehicle to load. And well, you can use it for camping or whatever, even charge another car, right? But what about heating up a pool? <laughs> How about vehicle to pool? So yeah, you know, there are some rare cases where there could be a total power outage, like what happened in Spain and Portugal recently. And then, okay, when you have the regular vehicle to load with camp, you just plug it in the car, right? But this time we actually have to run an extension cable over to the shed. So is the cable going to overheat? And I think it will pull around uh, three kilowatt or 13 amp continuously. So how's, I mean, how is it going to be? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's test it. Unfortunately, uh, this car didn't come with a, uh, the, the adapter, the vehicle, the load adapter. Maybe Kia forgot to include it when I pick up the car. So I'm now topping it up. Uh, it's not too relevant that we start uh, whatever. Um, I can show you now. I prepared the, the extension cord here. And yeah, uh, we are now at 97%. We are topping up a bit, 10.8 kilowatt there. What goes into the battery after discharging, I mean, as after charging loss is 10 kilowatt. So uh, we could wait for 100%, but uh, that will take 20 more minutes. It's not really a point here. And I already calculated that we have to run this test for 20 hours. I need to return this car in around 16 hours. <laughs> but okay, so what I'm gonna do is that if you look here in the back, okay, even though we don't have the, the adapter. So there's a Shuko here we could use. And it provides 16 amp, 230 volt AC, which is a limitation for this car. But right now it is not active because we are charging. Oh, what the heck? I just disconnected. And for some strange reason, wait, uh, the car suddenly reports 100% and then 76.7 kilowatt hour. Huh? Wacky BMS, anyone? Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, right now, uh, the vehicle to load. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, we are plugged in. Yeah, we need to start it, but there's actually no start button here. You can see if you go to EV. It will lag here okay yeah it, it's connected but it's not pulling any power yet okay we connected everything the light here is green the display there still shows zero power yeah because it, it's in idle mode so we just run this extension cord maybe just tuck it like this roughly yeah so the car needs to be on so without uh, if you use the adapter it can be off but Okay, so there's some idle power. Maybe we don't care too much about that. Some losses there. So here we have 10 meter extension cable, Shuku. Close over here, into the shed. You see, this could have been a, a case where you pull it into the car, I mean, sorry, in, into the house in, in case we don't have light. Oh, I mean, electricity in the house and then you could cook or do whatever, right? From that cable. But we just connect it here into the heat pump. Yeah, well the heat pump is on the other side so we can check it out now. So yeah, this is the heat pump. It's, it's called Gullberg Jansson. So there are some buttons here on the outside. And, and then also I have app support. It's pretty cool. So I set it to be 17.5 and this inlet is 18.5. So now I want to heat it up. Set it to 20, 21. I'm not sure how much we want to. Yeah, it goes really slow though. To heat it up but yeah after a while then this number should also update oh yeah i forgot if you adjust now you see that's the target temp that's the one i set in the app so we set the target temp to well, whatever it doesn't matter let's set it to 21 degrees celsius and then after a while it will tell you the inlet temp yeah so 18 that's most likely the the water temperature right now Okay, so the compressor status needs to ramp up. It's at 61%. After a few minutes, we should read 100% power. So now it will start uh, heating. This screen shows that we have 1.3 kilowatt discharge rate. 
Uh, the same we see here, like two now. Wait, it jumps a bit up and down. Yeah, two point eight. Okay, but this seems to not fluctuate that much. But uh, interesting, when you go to map here or whatever, right? when you see this screen here, we see that it doesn't report anything. It reports some electronics, which is probably uh, lights and stuff. If I turn on the light, for example, high beam maybe. Then it goes up slightly. If I switch off the lights, then it goes down. So this seems to be just 12 volt being used right now. And then the brain needs to be active and the, yeah, the screen and everything. Um, but if you go back to the EV here, then it just reports this and then it says that it will remain, okay, 33 hours really, but uh, it needs to ramp up even more, 1.5 kilowatt now. The heat pump ramps up quite slowly. This is why also um, my ex like, expectation is that the heat pump is not very good for uh, when we have you know, TIB and a grid reward because you want to quickly pull lots of power which these chargers are good for. So suddenly you pull 11 kilowatt, but here it takes a long time to ramp up a 1.6 kilowatt now. Here you see the pool, and it's required by law to have this protective cover. I'll open and check it out. So if animals or kids will fall in here, they're not gonna drown because it, it floats and protects here, see? But also it acts as uh, insulation and also reduces evaporation a lot, but actually in the daytime, when the sun is blasting in here, we also get some free heat. So, yeah, the robot has been doing a good job. I've been running it now undercover oh, lol, 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 for a while, and it seems to clean really well. It just need some manual cleanup here and on the edges, but it did most of the work for me. So, yeah, the outlets are here, two of them, they blow out warmer water and then skimmers over there so it circulates and then this is going to take a while then before we are done right i'm not sure how long i'm going to run the test but yeah look at this it looks nice and clear pump has been running now for i don't remember now it's almost a week yeah the robot is still there well, let me just leave it there maybe i should restart it again let's do that we have some buttons here well there's only one button here too much start and usually needs a couple of seconds and then it will start again come on, come on let's go let's go yeah he's, i think it's moving yeah there's no okay it moves it moves over here it just does random movements <laughs> oh he's gonna he's gonna go he's gonna surface maybe you see it? Here they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. Santa's little helper. Yo, what's up? Wait, how long is it going to do that? Then it goes down, right? Then it goes down again. <laughs> oh, and the compressor status is reported as 100% now. Which means that it's running at full power. It's not that noisy at all. Wow. This is good stuff. I think it's a Swedish product. Gullberg and Jansson. But okay. Um, see here the, the stats. It's rated output 12.7 kilowatt. And then uh, input. Uh, well, we can see. But I think it pulls around 3 kilowatt. Well, that means actually a COP4. Best case, right? Maybe I should... Um, install a roof over it yeah so you get better protection well i actually get some protection there so of course if if the wind and the rain blows from from this direction then you get protection under the roof there oh huh, really only 2.1 kilowatt huh i could even uh, connect an extent oh, I, I could connect a splitter there and uh, run the pump yeah the pool pump which sucks around 700 watts but okay maybe i don't want to split it we just only the pool the heat pump but 2.1 only huh and then here car scan reports yeah it jumps a bit up and down three two okay not sure why it jumps up and down but well, this is gonna take a while to test supposedly we can last 25 hours yeah because it will stop at 20 percent the lowest it can go with the vehicle to load
it's now one at night we've been running the test for seven hours and it's still pulling 2.1 kilowatt okay hmm i don't know where i got the three kilowatt from oh you know what i think when i saw three kilowatt in timber that was probably the heat pump plus the pump oh, i mean the the circulation pump so yeah so that means circulation pump might be pulling around 900 watts or maybe roughly seven eight hundred not exactly sure but um yeah a fun fact is that um when the car is on now it counts the time here but also the consumption goes up so yeah um and then if we look at how many uh watt hour we have left now a calculator that we have <clears throat> we have a 2.2 kilowatt average power draw so i'm not sure how correct this is but it could mean that we have only around 100 watt of uh, extras running here that sounds almost too low because i think normally when when i don't have any vehicle to load i will see that it pulls more than 100 watts here maybe two three hundred watts so uh, and the pool temperature has gone up but uh, we had 19.5 we started at 18.5 so we only gained one degree celsius it doesn't sound like a lot but it actually takes a lot of energy to heat up that much water i'll come back to that once we're done with the test but also i'll show you here in tibbe that um, okay uh, right now the prices are not that crazy high but earlier this evening when we started the test actually around there you see that the price was a lot higher we're talking about around uh, over 20 euro cents per kilowatt hour this is before any f grid fee or yeah, well, um, yeah okay if you start adding all the fees here it actually becomes shaved off slightly because we have strömstötte which yeah the government is helping us for these peaks but um, okay if you go back to just to look at the pure spot price uh, what we could do is we could charge the car around this area where the electricity is cheap and since the car has uh, 11 kilowatt onboard charger you can slurp in a lot of electricity right and then we discharge it during the more expensive times but then the charging speed is around five times higher than the discharge at least in this case so yeah i mean that's one use case right and let's check now the shuku uh what do you got there i'm assuming it's hard for me to read it seems like around 35 degrees celsius and then roughly 30 degrees around here okay further out well i mean it should be the same right I'm trying to get a good reading here uh i'm been to 17 that sounds about right the cable is 20. You have to go closer. Oh, this is always harder. 20 degrees, roughly. 21, 22. I think that's fine. Let me try to feel it then. Okay, now I don't didn't want to touch anything yet before I did the measurement, but it just feels warm, not overheated. I bet these cables they can withstand more like 60 70 degrees or, or higher but uh, it's cold in here you know 16 degrees 17 degrees and also especially outside here so i don't think there's any problem for overheating uh, especially if we're simply pulling 2.1 kilowatt only it is now seven in the morning and we are down to 64 percent now it reports minus 2.2 kilowatt so uh, yeah i think we're gonna end the, the experiment here but the remaining uh, estimated time remaining is 13 hours and that means roughly uh, 24 hours total and and then oil consumption went up yeah okay and then now we are at 47.6 kilowatt hour the uh, battery temperature has dropped uh, slightly during the night now so yeah this was a fun experiment to see if it's possible to heat the pool well i kind of knew it but also want to see how long can we actually run the pool heater at uh, more or less full speed but you see that now we have 20.5 degrees celsius in the pool we start at 18.5 so we gain only two degrees celsius it doesn't sound like a lot until you start calculating 
If you assume that uh, yeah, this is uh, four times nine meters, and then around one and a half meter on average, it goes from 1.3 meters to 1.9 meters roughly. So um, from what I remember, it's supposed to have 50,000 liters of water. And then if we want to heat it up two degrees Celsius, uh, multiply by two, but also multiply by the energy needed to heat up one liter, per, uh, one liter water, one degree Celsius, which is 4,168 uh, Joule. And then we get this big number here. If we divide it by 3.6 million, which is then how many Joules per kilowatt hour, we get 115 kilowatt hour. And then when you look at car scanner, how much we have spent at least, it was roughly 29 kilowatt hour. If I assume 5% conversion loss between whatever DC was there into AC, then we get 27.5 kilowatt hour. Uh, I mean, these numbers are not 100% correct, but this should give us 4.2 COP. So yeah, we need 115 kilowatt hour but we only got uh, we, well, we got only 27, but then because the heat pump was so efficient, we could heat it up that much. So, you know, this puts things in perspective, how much heat energy the pool can store, you know, from, well, let's say from 30 degrees Celsius down to five degrees Celsius. It's just massive. That's just the nature of water. But also, uh, at least when we run it, uh, pull around 2.1, 2, 2 2.2 2 kilowatt continuous load, there was no problem, no overheating of the cable or the car system. And it means that in case of an emergency where there is no power in the house, you could use your car as a backup and keep it running for a long time for heating or cooking or lights or whatever. So yeah, interesting test. <laughs> Not sure if you guys find it interesting, but at least we try it now. Vehicle to pool. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.